hello. What is up, mortals? It is I, the spirit of vice, here with a new video for you today. Welcome to part three, season two of What If Deku Became a Green Lantern? I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So we begin. All Might's day hadn't been as hectic as he'd assumed. For starters, there weren't actually a lot of questions about young Midoriya. If anything, everyone seemed to actively avoid the subject, especially young Todoroki. If Toshinori had to guess, Aizawa had probably scolded them about it during homeroom. The only questions he had gotten were a few concerns about All for One, which was not ideal because he wanted to imagine that bastard in a grave as opposed to a current day villain, but he did his best to answer them anyway. It had mainly focused on what exactly the man's power was, as well as his relation to the League of Villains. To his credit, All Might was surprisingly calm when answering their questions. He'd explain that All for One was an old villain from before even his time, who stayed alive all this time by using his deplorable ability to steal people's quirks. He even explained the fact that he was reportedly born during the days of the first quirk users without mentioning the other quirk user from his time. There wasn't even an allusion to One for All. And as the day ended, he mentally congratulated himself for handling the day with an elegance rare to him, only for that train of thought to be instantly derailed the moment he stopped at his house and saw what had happened while he was away. Young Midoriya, Mrs. Midoriya, he said as he observed the three strangers who were definitely not there this morning. What happened while I was out? Instead of either of the Midorias answering his question, the little blue man answered him while gesturing to the women with him. Ah, you must be All Might. The Ion Entity made mention of you when we first came to Earth. I am Ganthet, Guardian of the Universe. As you can probably guess, my fellow Guardian is Sade, but I'm sure you are familiar with us. As for the other woman, this is Indigo One, leader of the Indigo Tribe. Please to make your acquaintance. Right, I've... Heard about the Guardians, but I don't know much about the Indigos aside from them being named after their color. Heard you were missing for the past year, but you're here now, in my house. His expression was fairly neutral, as if he didn't have any reaction to the shocking scenario. But it suddenly changed as he saw the very unfocused expression of the young Midoriya. Uh, what's going on with... Oh, that's just the effect of him astral projecting into his android. His consciousness is actually in that little robot there. Inko said as she pointed at the miniature Izuku that was looking at the men from on top of the table where their leftovers still were. With a little wave, the action figure robot greeted his teacher in a high-pitched voice. Good afternoon, All Might. Sorry for the mess. We were too preoccupied to clean it up before you got here. Since I'm sure you're curious... They teleported in here while we were eating lunch, right after I made this little android to see if I could find an alternative to physically going to the sports festival. Don't worry, I'm fine. This is just what happens when I astral project. I should probably be more concerned about this than I am, but I honestly don't have it in me to care right now. As long as no one is about to burst into my apartment, they can stay here as long as they need. Surprisingly, we were not going to ask to use your residence, but your generosity is greatly appreciated. Indigo One responded with a grateful smile on her face. All Might merely gave the woman a thumbs up in response before reaching into his bag and pulling out a small stack of papers. Here is the classwork and homework you missed, Mr. Ion. Now then, I am going to venture over to Sir Night Eye's agency to inform young Mirio of this development and catch up with my old friend. I'd stay longer, but I don't have the energy to deal with aliens right now. Sorry if that sounds specious, sir and bams. After placing the papers on the table, All Might bowed to the alien leaders and proceeded to walk out of his apartment. It was somewhat absurd, but when considering the fact that the number one hero wasn't the best at dealing with these unexpected circumstances, 
It was quite understandable that he would simply leave Midoriya to handle the situation. It was more of his area of expertise, after all. Uh, forgive me if this is out of my jurisdiction, your eminences, but shouldn't we be more concerned with All Might's reaction? I mean, shouldn't he have less of a laid-back reaction to your sudden arrival? Ordinarily, I'd agree with you, but I think we have bigger things to worry about than All Might having the stereotypical reaction to coming home to aliens. I do believe that his reaction is justified. He is only human, and he does not have an entity of his own, nor is he a lantern. Sade said as she stated her own opinion on the matter. There is only so much he can react to before he just filters it all out. I would say you are the one with the bizarre reaction, Mrs. Inko Midoriya. You only learned all of this an hour ago, and your exact reaction was, Oh, that explains it all. Surely that is a concerning reaction in its own right. Touché. To be fair to Mrs. Midoriya, her reaction to the revelation that her son was possessed by an alien whale god and tasked with recreating an international police force was met with fainting before any words were spoken. It was only when Izuku himself explained that he had been training with these deific powers for a year now and was completely used to it that she had been so accepting of this groundbreaking revelation. Unlike All Might, her only concern was that her son was not in any danger, so she had a reason to gloss over what would otherwise have her admitting herself to a mental hospital. Honey, is a free browser add-on available on Google, Opera, Firefox, Safari? If it is a browser, it has Honey. Honey automatically saves you money when you check out on sites like Amazon, Papa John's, and Kohl's. Wherever you shop, it's a good chance that Honey can save you money. All you have to do when you're checking out at these stores is to click that little orange button and it will scan the entire internet to find discount codes for you. If there is a coupon code, they will find it. And if it's not a coupon code, you can rest assured that you are getting the best price possible. If you install Honey right now, you can save like 50 to $100 on your shopping doing nothing. There's literally no reason not to install Honey. It takes two clicks, 10 million people use it, 100,000 five-star reviews, unless you hate money. You should install Honey. I do believe we should get back on track. If that expression is appropriate, we, we should discuss our current plans with rebuilding the core. To begin with, it seems as if you are becoming more comfortable with the power of Ion. But is there anyone else you would feel be more deserving of this power? Well, there are a small handful of people that I think would do well with the Green Lantern Ring, but... I'm not sure what exactly constitutes one as properly worthy. If the requirement was just willpower, then we'd have lots of candidates. But if we want a repeat of the Sinestro core... The boy android trailed off. His concern was evident to all except his mother, who was unaware of anything outside of the Green Lanterns. Forgive me, but I'm out of the loop here. What exactly is the Sinestro core? Ingo asked. The Sinestro Corps is a horrendous enemy of the Green Lantern Corps, led by our former member Sinestro. As opposed to our Green Light of Will, they use the Yellow Light of Fear to force their worlds into submission, Said said before returning to Ganthet's question. Preferably, new members would be those who would use their rings exclusively for the benefit of others. Is there anyone you can think of who exhibits a behavioral pattern of self-sacrifice and humility? Well, there is one specific candidate of mine who I thought would be a good recruit, but I haven't had a lot of time to get to know him. What with Thelphidian's intervention and my meetings with Adara, it's been extremely hectic as of late. Sorry. Your apologies reflect your good nature, but they are unnecessary. You are not instructed to evaluate the characters of your comrades, you have done exceedingly well with the limited information you have been going on. I believe the appropriate Earth term is good job. 
Indigo One said as he gazed down at the boy with sympathy. Indigo One speaks the truth, young torchbearer. We have been hiding from the Sinestro and Red Lantern Corps ever since we gave you the rings. You have done a fantastic job bonding with Ion without our guidance. Now that we have returned, our focus can be directed on remaking a central code of conduct for the Green Lantern Corps. While that happens, you will be able to resume your schooling without any issues, aside from this brief inconvenience. We shall instruct you on how to properly manage your constructs and craft your own lantern rings. I would suggest that you create safety programs and give it to your candidate to test their use of it. If they meet your parameters, you can allow them to keep it, and we will have found our first new member. What is their name? Ejiro Kirishima! He's really friendly and always comments on whether or not something meets his standard of manliness. He's surprisingly chivalrous for a high schooler, and I thought he'd be a good candidate even when I first met him, Izukubot said with a nostalgic smile on his face. Ganthet nodded. Fantastic. I will teach you to forge a ring in the coming weeks, but you should still have ample time to focus on your studies. But before that, I will instruct you on how to remove your constructs to avoid any more of this clutter. Well, that would be preferable to this current arrangement. If we can start right away, how would I suggest to get rid of this robot? To begin with, imagine something that can physically destroy your construct, such as an explosive of some sort. Try to craft an iron side the android and imagine the detonation affecting only the machine itself. Nothing more. Okay. The miniature humanoid closed its eyes as Izuku began creating a microscopic charge inside its first construct. I think I've made it, but I still don't know if it's contained. Allow me to assist you, then, Ganthet said as he crafted a small energy bubble around the droid. Detonate it now. <coughs> With a small yell, the fingering promptly exploded, sending tiny pieces of green shrapnel around the inside of the bubble. The green haze around Izuku's eyes dissipated, as he suddenly shot up and looked around in a brief daze before realizing that his consciousness was back inside his own body. Not bad for a first attempt. The Guardian remarked as he lifted the bubble and deposited the shrapnel on the emerald workbench. We can try again later when you have more free time. For now, we shall figure out our accommodations. I fear this location is far too small to adequately host all of us. Well, if accommodations are an issue, you can stay at our apartment until you've made your own dwelling. Inko suddenly spoke up, offering her own solution. With Izuku currently living with All Might, they had a free room available, so they'd still have space even if he came back soon. If that is acceptable, then we shall accompany you back to your dwelling, Mrs. Inko Midoriya. Uh, just Inko is fine, Sir Ganthet. As the Midorias were discussing the future of the Guardians and Indigo One, All Might was having a discussion with his former sidekick and new pupil. So you're saying these Guardians have suddenly resurfaced in your apartment after being presumed dead for over a year, and you just left with little explanation. Sir Knight I muttered as he listened to All Might's explanation about his sudden arrival. Er, uh, yes. I would have stayed longer, but I, I didn't have the strength of mind to deal with that at the time. This is more their jurisdiction than ours, you know. He's got a point, sir. Mirio butted in to All Might's defense. This isn't exactly a normal thing, much less one you can get used to without experiencing it firsthand. I doubt he was in the right frame of mind to deal with something so out of the ordinary, so he left it to Midoriya, who's possibly even more comfortable with this than me. <sighs> and you say that the leader of the Indigo tribe was with them as well. Now that I really think on it... Mirio! Tell me what you saw in that vision the ring showed you. Was an indigo in it? Actually, yeah. In the vision the ring showed me, I saw myself and Midoriya along with six other lanterns. I know the orange lantern was all for one, but I didn't recognize the red and yellow ones. The indigo and star sapphire were obscured, and so was the person wielding a white light. Uh, beyond that, I don't know anything else. I couldn't even tell what city we were in. So you don't know if your vision is coming true or not. That's unfortunate. 
All Might muttered with a contemplative look. I don't wish to cast doubt on these guardians of the universe, but I fear their sudden return is an omen of a coming crisis, one that will make the Earth a target of alien powers. I pray that I am merely paranoid, but we'd best prepare regardless. I concur. I'll talk with Midoriya tonight about his involvement with the sports festival. Obviously, the two of you won't interact much, if at all, so there won't be a repeat of the USJ. But I'd still like for him to be able to properly control his power. Hope isn't offensive enough to cover for the lack of will, it seems. But for now, don't worry about that. We'll focus on potential blue lanterns instead. How's your search going, young Mirio? Uh, about that, it's not going so well. Hope isn't a very widespread emotion in Japan, it seems. The only other person Adara seems compatible with is you, All Might. I'll need to speak with the Guardians about this to be sure, but we may need to change our goals here to make any real progress. Very well. For now, focus on trying to spot those capable of rallying others to act. Perhaps that will help widen the list of applicants. And don't forget to practice your permeation for the sports festival. With one last nod, Muriel made his way for the door, his sights now set on the upcoming festival, as well as the small, nagging feeling that a disaster was slowly approaching. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime. With a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Secondly... On behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is that we only accept members 16 years or older to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the Recruitment Discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, uh, that's it from us for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, I have been the Spirit of Ice telling all of you to have a great day. Goodbye.